Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about all of the physical books I have acquired since around the middle of July. So when I visited London to go see The Cursed Child, I picked up these three books a second hand. Starting with Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and I have this beautiful penguin cloth bound classics edition of it. I just, I wanted one of these for so long and I could not resist picking it up when I saw it. It's in really good condition as well, there are a few little smudges on the cloth but that really doesn't bother me. So this is about a young woman named Marion Dashwood who falls head over heels for a dashing but unsuitable man named John Willoughby. I don't know much about it other than that but I would expect all the normal things I expect going into a Jane Austen novel. I'm always down for a bit of sassy social commentary. I also picked up another classic but this time a children's classic, I got Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island and I am so pleased with this copy of it. It is so cute, it is one of the Puffin classics and it also has an introduction by Owen Colfer. I'm going to be studying this book over the next couple months so I was really pleased when I found a copy of it second hand. I'm sure most of you know the basic premise of this book already. It is about a young boy named Jim Hawkins who finds a map that will lead him to Treasure Island and what ha happens to him because of that map. And of course he encounters one of the world's most infamous pirates. I never read this as a child, in fact I didn't read that many children's classics as a child so I'm really looking forward to trying this out as an adult and seeing what I think of it. Tch, <laughs> adult. And I picked up The Green Road by Anne Enright which was shortlisted for the Women's Baileys Prize. I read The Gathering by Anne Enright in my second semester of my first year of university and I absolutely loved it. This takes place in a small town on the west coast of Ireland and it follows one family. The matriarch of this family is called Rosaline and her four children have moved across the globe. I think they are in Dublin, New York, West Africa and Mali. She announces that she is going to sell their family home and the family come together for one final Christmas in that home. I'm going to be reading a lot about Ireland and Irish identity over the next few months so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. And of course while I was in London I couldn't avoid foils. Foils is one of the most beautiful places on earth. I don't normally tend to buy new books just because they are a little bit more expensive than I can afford. So when I do pick them up I tend to look for something a little bit extra, like a signed copy. I'm not that fussed about having signed copies of books that I just buy, you know, it's different if you're going to a signing and get to meet and have a chat with the author. But if it's just signed in a bookshop I'm not that bothered. But I want to get a little bit extra if I can when buying a brand new book. So the book I decided to get in foils was Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton and this is possibly one of the most beautiful book covers I have ever seen. Look at how shiny it is. So this is about a young woman who leads a rebellion in a desert I think. It is a YA book um, so I think it's kind of similar to a lot of um, YA books with a strong female character that leads a rebellion. So think The Hunger Games, um, the Red Queen trilogy, Divergent, that kind of thing. I've read a lot of these kind of books recently and I'm looking to take a little bit of a break from them. But I am sure I will love this one when I'm feeling a bit more in the mood for it. And of course another book that I picked up fairly recently was The Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. If you want to hear my thoughts on this prior to reading the script but after watching the play in the Palace Theatre, I will leave my discussion of that down below. And I talk about my thoughts on reading the actual script in my August wrap up which will be linked down below as well. Next I have a couple books that my mom very kindly bought me when she was visiting me. The first of which is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates. I have mentioned this in a previous video um, when I was about halfway through it and I loved this book so much. This is a non-fiction book. Um, you may know Laura Bates as the um, writer and founder of Everyday Sexism. This has a bunch of different sections including Facebook filter and Instagram, uh, Mean Girls and Mental Health, That's Not Your Vagina and one of my favourites Clitterish All Sorts, which was always my go-to pub quiz name. I spoke about this more in my August wrap-up so I will leave that linked down below if you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts but I loved it. Next is another book that I've already read. In fact, I read it before my mother bought it for me, um, but I thought it would be really important for me to have a physical copy of it, and that is Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. I read this with Mel um, a few months ago, and I will leave the wrap up where I talk about it down below. Not sure quite how long ago it was now. Was it July? Yeah, this is one of my favorite books that I've read all year. Um, it is about a 17 year old, I think, called Emma, who, um, is raped. It is about rape culture and what it's like to be a survivor of rape. 
It's also set in Ireland, which is one of the reasons I want a physical copy of it. I think it will be really useful for me to have in the bibliography for my dissertation. I have another book coming up in this haul, which I bought because I thought it might be useful for my dissertation. Um, and when I'm a bit further in to the project, I may do a video talking about all of the books that I'm using in my bibliography if you're interested. In fact, let's just talk about the other book that I picked up for my dissertation. Um, I got Contemporary Irish and Welsh Women's Fiction, Gender, Desire and Power. Um, this is a critical guide and it is by Lyndon Peach. This is a comparative study of texts from the 20th and 21st centuries and that are based in Ireland, Wales and Northern Ireland. I don't really know anything about this book yet. I, I just saw it secondhand and it was really cheap and I thought it might be a good source for me to dip into. Quite similar to Girl Up by Laura Bates, I have another gender-based non-fiction book and that is Girls Will Be Girls by Emer O'Toole, which is possibly one of my favourite book covers ever. Look how nice this is. This is about the performative nature of gender and what it means to act like a girl. It is about the gender stereotypes that are so deeply ingrained in our society and how we can bend the so-called rules of gender. I really really want to get to this one soon because reading the Laura Bates book in my current emotional state was really really good for me. So I hope I will get the same effect from Girls Will Be Girls. Next I have a YA book and it is Faceless by Alyssa Scheinmel. This is about a young girl named Maisie who has her face burned in a terrible accident and she has the chance to get a face transplant. This is about her living her life and adjusting to her life when she can barely recognise herself. I've not heard a huge amount about this book and I'm really intrigued. Um, burn victims is something that is quite close to home for me. So I'm hoping this will be a very well done and sensitive read. Next is a book that I picked up on a bit of a whim when I saw it at work and that is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Novik? Novik? I don't really know that much about this book. I have seen it floating around booktube quite a lot and some people have loved it and some people haven't quite loved it. I'll just read you the blurb of it since I don't know that much. Oh man, how do I say this name? Iska loves her village set in a peaceful valley. But the nearby enchanted forest casts a shadow over her home. Many have lost to the wood and none return unchanged. The villagers depend on an ageless wizard, the dragon, to protect them from the forest's dark magic. However, his help comes at te a terrible price. A young village woman must serve him for ten years, leaving all she values behind. Agnieszka fears her dearest fr friend Cassia will be picked at the choosing, for she is everything Agnieszka is not. Beautiful, graceful, and brave. Yet when the dragon comes, it's not Cassia he takes. Ooh, this sounds really good. Oh man, I want to read this now. There's some really great testimonials from people like Ursula Le Guin, Cassandra Clare, Lev Grossman, Robin Hobb. I feel like I need more really good fantasy in my life. So hopefully I will enjoy this one. At work I also picked up a very beautiful children's book that I've been seeing dotted around the place and have been so intrigued by because it looks so beautiful and that is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is about a young girl whose best friend goes missing to the forgotten territories of the island they live on and she volunteers to try and help find her friend. She is a cartographer's daughter so she knows a lot about maps and navigation and she hopes these skills will come in useful in the search part for finding her friend but as they go through the journey of trying to find her friend she realizes that it's not just her friend that needs saving it is the entire island all of the pages in this have these like little doodles and illustrations on them and it's just it's stunningly beautiful next I have Arcadia by Ian Piers which I feel like everyone on booktube has picked up because of Jen Campbell. This book comes so highly recommended and I will always trust her recommendations. I believe this is about three interlocking worlds and it is about that kind of metafictional idea of going to other worlds. April 1960. In the cellar of a professor's house in Oxford, 15 year old Rosie goes in search of a missing cat and instead finds herself in a different world. And her world is a sun-drenched land of storytellers and prophecies. But is this world real, and what happens if Rosie decides to stay? Meanwhile, a rebellious scientist is trying to prove that time does not even exist, with potentially devastating consequences. As the three worlds come together, one question arises. Who controls the future? 
or the past. It sounds so wonderful. It is quite the chunky one, um, but I feel like I need to immerse myself in a really big book soon. So maybe I will pick this one up. Now I have these three parcels to open from the book depository and I know what are inside these and I know who sent them and I'm very, very excited to finally open them. Start with this one. So I have Warson Shires teaching my mother how to give birth and this is a poetry pamphlet that I've wanted for a really, really long time. Warson Shire is a Kenyan-born Somali poet based in London and I have heard so many good things about her work. I think this has a lot to do with Islam. I just heard that it is such a brilliant, brilliant collection and that title appeals to me so much. Next package. This one is the Wordsworth Children's Classics edition of The Little Prince, which I have been so interested in reading over the past month or so. When I found out there was a Netflix adaptation of it, I thought I needed to read the book before I watched that adaptation. And every time I've mentioned it to anyone since then, they have just told me how much they cry. The Little Prince is a classic tale of equal appeal to children and adults. On one level, it is the story of an airman's discovery in the desert of a small boy from another planet, the little prince of the title, and his stories of intergalactic travel. While on the other hand, it is a thought-provoking allegory of the human condition. So the first of the two books in that package was Everything I Never Told You, and that comes very highly recommended from Joss from Squibbles Reads. Joss is another person whose recommendations I just always trust. And honestly, I picked this one up one, because I know it's a fantastic book, but two, because it is a book that Joss really enjoyed and I need to say thank you to Joss for um, her being a fabulous friend. And I thought reading a book that she has really, really loved would be a nice way to say thank you and I hope she thinks the same. This is about a Chinese-American family living in Ohio in the 1970s. Lydia is the favourite child of Marilyn and James Lee and they have very high hopes for her and what she can achieve. But when Lydia's body is found in a local lake, the family is sent into chaos. But when Lydia's body is found in a lake, the family go through a very turbulent time and their lives turn to chaos. Sounds like a very important own voices read, so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. And finally, I have another book for my dissertation, and that is The Country Girls by Edna O'Brien. It is the early 1960s in a country village in Ireland. Kathleen Brady and her attractive friend Baba are on their way to the verge of womanhood and dreaming of spreading their wings in a wider world, of discovering love and luxury and liquor and above all, fun. With body innocence shrewd for all their inexperience, the girls romp their way through convent school to the bright lights of Dublin, where Kathleen finds the suave, idealised lovers rarely survive in the real world. This sounds so good and something I really need in my life right now, so I'm really looking forward to picking this one up very, very soon. And of course, I want to give a massive, massive thank you to Josh and everyone from the Literary Gladiators for sending me these um, after I won their giveaway. I am so grateful and they have brought me so much happiness just opening them and receiving them and I am sure they will be absolutely brilliant reads, all four of them. So they are all the physical books I have picked up since mid-July. Um, this may be the last physical book haul for quite a while. So thank you very much for watching. If you have liked this video, do be sure to give it a like. And if you are new, maybe subscribe. It would make me very happy. Um, and I will see you guys in a few days.